In this lesson, we shall learn how to manage constraints. Constraints are rules that are enforced on data stored in a table. First, log in to the Oracle system and then click on Administration tab. Scroll down to the tables under Database Objects in the Schema region. Click on Tables to proceed. In the next screen that is displayed, change the schema to HR as shown, since we are going to discuss constraints in the context of a table in the HR schema. Next, click on the Go button. Select the table EMP underscore citizenship. This was created and modified in previous lessons. Click on the table name to view the table definitions as shown. You can see the columns in the table. Notice the column EMP underscore ID. Since the HR schema already has an employee table, it makes sense to ensure that the EMP underscore ID column in the EMP underscore citizenship table is linked to the employee table. This is done using constraints. Click on the OK button to return to the previous screen. It will be a good idea to take a look at the employee table now. Select this table from the list and click on it. You can now see the columns in this table. Notice that the very first column is called employee underscore ID. Click on the OK button to return to the previous screen. Now select the EMP underscore citizenship table from the list and click on the Edit button. In the Edit Table screen, click on the Constraints tab as shown. Notice that there are no existing constraints. Click on the pull-down menu to see different types of constraints. Let us discuss these briefly. The primary key constraint is a column that uniquely identifies each row in a table. The unique constraint ensures uniqueness of the data in a column for each row in the table. The check constraints checks for allowed values to the data in a column. The foreign key constraint links a column of a table with a primary key or a unique key column of another table. We will add a primary constraint first. Select primary from the pull-down menu and click on the add button. Enter a name for the primary constraint and select the EMP underscore ID column for setting the primary key constraint as shown. Next, click on the Continue button. At this stage, it will be a good idea to review the SQL statement that will be executed to add the constraint. To do that, click on the Show SQL button. After reviewing the SQL statements, click on the Return button. You can now make this modification by clicking on the Apply button. An update message laid, laid, showing that the table has been modified successfully. At this point, let us confirm the creation of a primary key. Click on the General tab. Scroll down the screen and notice the primary key symbol appearing next to the EMP underscore ID column. Click on the Constraints tab once again. 